Getting a game over is a common occurrence in the Gill household. Whether it's from lack of skill, lack of mental investment, or a near comatose level of prescription pain medication, I've seen them all, and I've done them all. For many, they can be the subject of frustration, making players trudge through miles of gaming terrain because it was ages since their last checkpoint, or acting as a stone wall of difficulty that the player isn't able to climb over yet. However, it seems that some developers out there understand this plight to some degree, and have at least gone out of their way to make their game overs entertaining, or bizarre enough to soften the blow. So, let's take a look at some of the best. With this in mind, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 secret game over screens that were absolute genius. Number 10. Mass Effect 2 – Death by Mind Sex During the outstanding Mass Effect 2, you can replace Justica Samara with her daughter Morinth, if you so choose. Don't worry, they're pretty much identical, so no one will know, hush hush. There's not too much incentive to do this, though, except that Momo proposes that she'd be more than happy to jump Shepard's bones. Now, alien sex is part and parcel of the series, so for those of you looking to hard stamp their STD space book, you'd be tempted to accept this offer. The problem is that she's got a rare genetic defect which kills her lovers after mating with them. Still, nothing like loving in the face of danger, so after you accept, you proceed to... Ugh, die. Well, I mean, what did you expect? She did say that you might die. But then again, she did infer that you were special and you'd probably be okay. But who hasn't been lied to by a woman in order for her to steal your mind seed, right? Ha! Women! God! God, we need some women here at What Culture. Number 9. Operation Stealth. Santa Paragua is politically unstable. Delphine Software were notorious for putting funny and pretty harsh game over screens in their games. One of the best is probably from Operation Stealth, in which you'll find a sticky situation if you don't pick up a fake passport early on in the game. As a secret agent, you arrive in the exotic-sounding Santa Paragua, and immediately try to make your way through customs. Showing the guards your American passport, you're suddenly arrested and held at gunpoint. It turns out that there's a reward for any American passengers captured in the country, and you've just fallen prey to their corruption. Then again, you're a secret agent, what did you expect when you showed your actual real-life passport, you dummy? Number 8. Elite Beat Agents – Failure is not an option the Elite Beat Agents are Japan's version of the Men in Black, albeit a lot more focused on fixing problems through motivational dancing and a lot less focusing on fighting aliens. The games are typically wacky except for this level, a Christmas-inspired setting called You're the Inspiration. The storyline focuses on a young girl whose father has died in an accident, and her not being able to get over it since he promised that he'd be back in time for Christmas. Now, if you fail the game, you get an equally depressing but altogether determined game over. Fail, you're the inspiration? Are you insane or just evil? I've done many questionable acts in games, but let that poor little girl down, I draw the line there. Cut off my hands and I'll beat the level with my stumps. I will not fail her. That right there is the most inspirational game over in any game ever made. You will not fail this level twice. That is a guarantee. Number 7. Ghost Trick – With Great Power Comes Great Responsibility Ghost Trick is a lovely little puzzle game about reversing the deaths of people you'd really rather stay alive through the twin wonders of time travel and telekinesis. Partway through the game, you'll also access a third power, the ability to swap an object with another one of the same shape. Whilst this is usually very useful in the game's context, there's also a very good example of exactly how not to use that power. Near the end of the game, you're tasked with saving a friendly police inspector who's been shot by the bad guy. The way you're supposed to do this is by swapping the bullet that comes out of the gun with something much softer and less damaging like, I don't know, a woolly hat. However, in the same vicinity is a similar object that you definitely wouldn't want crashing into your face at the speed of sound, a crash helmet. If you mess up and swap the bullet with the crash helmet, the helmet has a much bigger impact on the poor detective's face, leaving him looking like a tour of a brain matter and jam factory. But it's a good life lesson. Just because it can be done, does not mean it should be done. Number 6. Sonic CD – Sonic chooses death over boredom Everyone knows that Sonic gets impatient. When you can run around at the speed of sound, you're likely to want things to move along quickly. That foot-tapping, arms-folded pose is one of Sonic's most famous, and he takes it to a whole new level in Sonic CD. If you leave the blue blur alone for three minutes, then instead of keeping a beat with his feet, he'll wag his finger at you and then jump to his death. Maybe three minutes alone with all the thoughts of the terrible side characters and OCs he's seen is enough to push him over the edge. I don't blame him, that shit is goddamn terminal. The worst thing, though, is that this doesn't just cost you a life, it literally ends the game and sends you right back to level one. Ouch. Number 5. Grange Hill 
Drugs are bad, kids. Ah, this takes me back. The BBC show Grange Hill was billed as being EastEnders for kids, which is so f depressing when you think about it. But at the same time, this was an institution. Now, through the 80s, the government here in the good old U of K made tons of content to dissuade the youth from smoking the pots and 420ing all over the hizzle. Therefore, in Grange Hill the game, you can get a really weird game over if you accept some white powder from this shifto in a jacket. Being a point and click game, you immediately pick it up because that's what you do, but uh oh, you're now addicted to coconut or on the verge of death. Whoa, man, this has really opened my eyes. That's it, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm off the smack. Uh, that, that, I'm throwing that down. I'm, I'm, off, the, I'm off the cigarettes. I'm, I'm, off the, I'm off the booze. I'm off, I'm off the Charlie. I'm off the cocaine. I'm off the honey busters. I'm off the sweet clouds. I'm off the I-9s. I'm off the gout. I don't need the gribble chips. I can do without the Smarties with three E's. And you know what? I really don't need these big bong bang bazinga beans. Number four, Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider Anniversary Fool's Gold. Lara Croft has had her fair share of comedic deaths at the hands of failed QTEs, the majority of which take place in Tomb Raider Anniversary. Yet one that manages to be at once comedic, tragic, and creative is at the, incoming pun, hand of Midas. Oh, you are welcome. So we all know about the tale of King Midas. He loved a bit of the shiny stuff and was unlucky enough to have his touch turn everything into gold. Well, this curse seems to have afflicted this decoration in the middle of this tomb, for if you touch it, you turn this busty girl into a golden bust. Ooh, that was a nice bit of wordplay. It's funny, but also horrifying to see her realize what's happening before she topples over and clunks to the floor. Number three, Guild Wars. Abaddon doesn't take too kindly to dancing. Abaddon sounds like the intro to John Cena's theme song. Abaddon! Guild Wars has never really reached the popularity of WoW, but it still garners a huge fan base. And with the game comes a huge amount of questing, lore, and engaging gameplay. The main narrative tasks you with defeating the god Abaddon, and he's built up through the game as some notorious bad mama jammer. So you can imagine his reaction when a group of adventurers show up and promptly emote dance in his face. The end result is anyone foolish enough to show no respect to the Lord of Secrets is one-shotted and sent packing. Although, to be honest, it's totally what I do. Number two, Dishonored. No means no. Despite being another silent protagonist amongst many, Corvo is still a very interesting character. Through his actions, we see the morality of a man and his desires. Although there is one part where he becomes an absolute perv. Partway through the game, you can catch your resident inventor, Piero, peeking on Kalista in the bath. You give him a resounding clip in the ear and send him packing, but you then get the opportunity to do exactly the same. Hell, you can even burst in. However, if you decide to do this and then ignore her protest to, you know, f off and also jump into the bath with her, you get a game over. You also get this funny message about how the rebellion is dissolved because of irreconcilable hostilities, all because you couldn't wait to share her suds. And number one, Far Cry 4, sometimes it does pay to listen to the bad guy. Now, whether you consider this to be a game over or a speedrun mega hack is up for debate, but either way, seeing as control is wrested from your hands and you shoot approximately zero guns, I consider it to be a game over experience. Basically, if you sit at the table where you first meet the all-powerful Pagan and listen to his advice and just stay put, then after 15 minutes you're treated to a new ending in which Min returns and takes you to your mother's grave while giving you some nice exposition, which is really quite cool. It's a wicked touch and something which is probably the most ingenious way to end a game. And that's our list. Got any other game overs that were absolute game changers? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And then why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.